the mentors that maybe you reach out to yesterday, today, maybe you talk to about this, this situation, get advice? Well, I'm, I'm pretty blessed in that uh, respect because I have a, a guy that has shares a name or I share his name that um, has been a pretty fair head high school coach in his career. And, you know, I say that obviously you guys know I'm talking about my dad and uh, who has, you know, had a tremendous high school career here um, in the state of Arkansas, has been following this program for years, whose father played here for the Razorbacks in 1946 through 49, John Lunny, who started me bringing me to games when I was eight and nine and 10 years old. And so I think I started there, you know, uh, surrounding myself with a guy that's got a lot of wisdom and seen a lot of things through and even following Arkansas football. He, he's, he's witnessed that over the years, not just as a fan, but as a parent, uh, a parent of the players, a parent of a coach. And so it started there with him. Um, and uh, really, it's, it's been such a whirlwind. That's kind of where it's ended, to be honest with you. I mean, the last 24 hours has been a blur. Uh, and, you know, people say that all the time, but it's really been true. I, 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 we went to eat lunch yesterday as a family. I'm not even sure where we ate. I was on the phone the whole time. I don't know what I ate. Uh, I don't know what, where we ate. Uh, but I do believe we ate lunch. And, um, but I've been using my dad as a resource. Not, not constantly, not on the phone 24 hours, but I'm going to use him. Uh, we've got Turner Gill that is sitting in our office that we, you know, that Chad hired in the off season and Hunter brought in the off season who, I mean, is a tremendous resource and going to be for me. Uh, Bobby Allen, who's seen this program, the good and the bad and the ugly over the last several years. Ron Cooper is a former head coach that I've already gleaned some things from him. Um, and so I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a mixture of everybody. Um, and then obviously using my best judgment, I'm going to have to make some decisions, uh, not hardcore decisions, but I'm going to have to make some day-to-day -day decisions on my own and, uh, I, I'm ready, prepared to do that, and that's why I'm sitting here at this at this table. Barry, just I mean, aside from motivating players, how do you motivate basically a lame duck staff, and just what do you do in, as far as recruiting this open week? Sure, that's a good that's a good question. Um, you, you know, I think uh, Hunter met with us this morning and said it very uh, clearly and very well, uh, and I, I think he said things that we all know is you know everybody at our table, almost a man has been through this in some way, shape, or form. And uh, the thing you can't lose sight of and that we're going to refuse to lose sight of is that, um, you know, we don't really owe anything to uh, anybody other than our players and ourselves uh, to uh, make the best of the next three weeks for these young men. And we got, like Hunter said, we've got 120 players down there that has, um, you know, has not uh, reaped the benefit of um, – the hard work, the labor, the off season. Football is uh, no offense. I see Coach Neighbors back here, and who was one of my first youth coaches that I've ever had. By the way, um, the best. I should say the best. The best youth coach I've ever had. Um, and that's what makes football so unique. You know, you work all all the way uh, year round, year round, and anymore it is truly year round. Summer, fall, spring, and you get twelve chances. You get twelve tw chances to. Uh, reap benefits of a victory and when you don't when you don't man it, it can become tiring and uh, laborsome and it's uh, becomes a burden when you put all that work in without the effort and so we've got two weeks left of, of a guaranteed 12 game season we got two two games left for them to go to try to reap benefits of the of the the work and the effort that they put in the off season. And so we owe that to them as a staff, these, these kids, and we owe that to ourselves to put our best foot forward uh, for these last two football games. And I'm very confident that we're going to do that. Coach, with the bye week, how much can you do with that much time to get ready for LSU? How much can you change? And do you feel like you can tailor the game a little bit more towards your personnel with all that time? Well, I, I, those are good questions as well, Nikki. Uh, I mean, uh, I think you're limited. I know you are. You're limited in what exactly you can do uh, with a short turnaround. I mean, we do have an extra couple days of prep that, that we will use for our advantage, that we have to. LSU plays a game this week, so that, that in itself gives us an advantage of a few days of studying them and learning some more intricate details of, about things that we're going to see from a game plan standpoint. Uh, can you install or would you want to install drastic changes? No. We've been working hard the last two years on our schemes on both sides of the ball and special teams. I think we'd be remiss at this point to come in and try to do a wholesale change, and I don't think that's necessary. Uh, really, at the end of the day, um, it, what it comes down to is if we got to play with more heart. Uh, it doesn't matter what scheme we have. We could install the triple option in the bye week, 
And if our guys don't believe in each other and believe that they're going to win and play with great resolve and, and, and uh, effort and toughness and grit, it doesn't matter what we do in that regard. And, and that's really what we've seen for the last few weeks since, like Hunter said, the halftime of the Kentucky game. Uh, we, we just haven't been the same. Uh, I think our players lost heart a little bit after we had a game in our grasp and we let it go. Uh, and I think it hurt and stung them. And uh, we just haven't recovered from that in a lot of ways. And so my main concern and my main priority is not scheme-based. Uh, sure, is there going to be some things that I would like to see, uh, some small things? Yes, there, there are. Um, will those be uh, obvious to the outside eye? Probably not. Um, but my main concern is to get these guys to uh, give their best foot forward and play our best football game of the year. Again, I want to say this, and our kids understand this. I said this last night. Our goal is to play our best football game of the year against Baton Rouge. And whatever that looks like, I don't really care. But I want it to be our best football game. Uh, Barry, you know as well as anyone the potential for what this program can do. Uh, what needs to take place, do you think, to get back t to that level? And I got one more after that. Yeah, can he do that, Kevin? <laughs> he, he, he can. OK. He's trying to sneak in. <laughs> He's well, got the mic. that's, that's right. Uh, well, I mean, you got to have a guy, you know, that obviously that 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 Hunter's going to be. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind is going to do a great job of finding somebody that understands this place, whether you're from here or not. It's important, I think, to understand uh, the, the state and the culture. Um, anybody that's come from the outside that's been successful has usually embraced that. Um, and I'm not saying Chad didn't because I've seen him do that and make great attempts to do that. So I think it starts there. I think you've got to understand the history and the heritage of the program. Um, I think that um, I think one of the things that's, that's key is, is recruiting footprint. And I think Chad had a, a good plan for that. And I think that some, somebody could piggyback on that and use that as a springboard to continue that, that emphasis. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a tough league. We all know that. It's the best league in football. Uh, the best division in football. But we all have seen there's been ebbs and flows in this over the years that has we've seen uh, the Razorbacks spike and be contenders, not just for, you know, for the SEC championship. Uh, we've played in the game three times um, and have uh, and so it's been done before. And I'm a firm believer what can be done. What's done before can be done again. You know, one of my favorite movies is the, the old movie The Edge. Uh, about them being trapped in the woods with the grizzly bear. Anybody remember that one? Alec Baldwin and I think Anthony Hopkins, right? And he had to talk to believe in Anthony Hopkins and that he, that he can kill the bear. And he said, I can't kill the bear. He said, yeah, what one man can do, another can do. Uh, and he's right. What, you know, what one team in the history here can do, another can do. I'm not saying that it's easy, but it can be done. And you just got to, you know, th th there's got to be a perfect storm of events. You got to have... Um, a good senior class, that's going to be critical for us to keep these players together so they continue to grow and mature together in this process. Like I mentioned before in my opening statement, um, my freshman year, you know, uh, things did not go very well early on for us, our freshmen. Our head coach had got let go after one game, and, but yet we, we, we uh, stuck together and uh, laid the foundation to be a senior class that uh, took Arkansas to their first ever SEC championship game. And so I think sticking together is going to be important for our football team, finding the right guy, obviously, that understands the history and the heritage of this program, and to hit the ground running with it. What's the game day setup going to look like from a coaching standpoint? Have you gotten that far? And it, can C.J. O'Grady, is there a, a route back to the team for C.J.? No, there's not. And um, uh, as far as game day, we're going to take Daniel Laprado, who served as our special teams uh, analyst and worked hand-in-hand -hand with me. And the special teams units, uh, I'm going to put Daniel on the field so he can run the meetings and coach on the field. I think that was the easiest, uh, a very clear, easy decision to make uh, for, for our football team. And so other than that, you won't see a lot of game day changes. Uh, Joe Craddock will continue to call the plays. And obviously, Chief will run our defense. And like I said before, it's going to be less about scheme. And it's going to be more about trying to get our players to play with great resolve and character. Coach Lenny, obviously not a lot of time uh, left for, for much this season. And, and the future, though, the recruits that have committed to the university, there's been a few that have dropped off already. What can a staff do in a situation like this? You've been through it before to try and retain these guys the best you can. Well, I'm sorry, Tom, I didn't get to your second part of your question. So here we go right here. This was it, right? And uh, well, I think the, the first thing, you know, when you recruit a kid and you get a kid committed, usually it's twofold. 
I mean, very seldom is a, is a kid committed solely for the purpose of a coach. It's usually a split between a coach and uh, the university, the draw, the program, uh, the facilities, the uh, educational opportunity, the culture and the environment in Northwest Arkansas, there's, it's split. So uh, as a recruiter, uh, we sell that, right? You go to a kid's home, you sell. You don't sell just yourself. You don't sell just your coaching staff. You sell the university. You sell the Razorbacks. You sell the state and the pride that the state takes in our football program. And so I think you just got to continue to sell that part. Say, hey, remember when we talked about this originally, this wasn't just about one person, one coach. This was about our program. You remind them of that. You remind them of – uh, the, the great qualities of our university, and then you remind them that we have leadership in place that is without question going to make a decision that he thinks is best for 120 football players to bring a head coach in here that um, is, is going to want to connect with them and give them the opportunity to reevaluate their situation in a positive manner. So, uh, And we're doing that. We're actively spent a lot of the time on the phone yesterday with several of our commitments, uh, encouraging them and reinforcing to them that they're wanted here and they're, uh, they're going to be honored here. And that doesn't mean that the kids aren't going to look somewhere else and during this time, but the, the, our message to them is just sit tight. Sit tight. we just got a few weeks left. Let the dust settle. Uh, just, just sit tight, and let's see how this thing plays out. You talk about knowing this program, knowing the history of this program. We've talked about a candidate pool. Could Barry Lunny Jr. be a candidate? Would you want to be the head coach at Arkansas? Well, Yes, Alyssa, obviously that's, you know, that's a dream of mine. But my focus right now is to, um, to get these guys their best opportunity to play their best football game they played this year. Because we, we've got some black eyes, and, and, and it needs to stop. And that's my sole focus, is getting uh, our coaches and our players to play their best football game that they played all year long when we go to Baton Rouge. Whatever that looks like, I just want it to be our best game. OD, special teams together. And then if we'll do that, and then we'll do it again the next week when we go to Little Rock, we're going to have a chance to win a football game. I believe that very strongly. And that's my sole focus. You got to take a couple more, Bob, and then Yeah, I actually had a couple. But kind of <laughs> piggybacking off that, I know this isn't the way you want to get your dream job, but the fact of the matter is right now you're the head coach of the Razorbacks. Kind of how does that feel? What what, what are the emotions well, like? Well, it's, it's – yeah, I would be lying to you if I told you it wasn't mixed. I mean, it's it's very strange in, in some ways, um, but yet it feels very natural in some ways. Uh, it, and uh, the fact that, you know, as far as the situation and the circumstances that we're facing, uh, I you know, I felt like, and obviously Hunter agreed, that I was the right fit for this time. Um, and so, um, you know, just flooded with memories and, you know, things of the past. I mean, I, like I told you to start my opening statement, I couldn't help but to think about Joe Kynes, you know, and what he went through. And, uh, you know, he had some great lines, you know, and he was always full of energy and excitement. And I just, I just, you know, remember how he invigorated our uh, football team that year. It wasn't perfect. I mean, we had some, you know, we had some things go bad during that season, but he gave us some hope, you know, and he gave us some confidence and, um, you mean kind of go as a role model? Yeah, I want to do that for our players. And then the other coach, you said Daniel, will he kind of start coordinating special teams? <laughs> so, because you got head coach and stuff to worry about. And then will you still coach the tight ends? What, what, yeah, I'm going to still what? be involved with the tight ends just because of the restrictions that we have on staffing. Um, I'm going to definitely do to that on a day-to-day -day basis. Daniel will. Uh, Daniel now will continue to collaborate on the special team stuff, but I'm obviously going to need him to step up and handle more of that on his own uh, because uh, you know I've been running those uh, you know for for the season. I've been running the four core units, the meetings daily, and just some things he could take off my my plate will be very helpful. He's very good and very confident in his ability to step up and to help us in that regard. You decided on a starting quarterback yet? <laughs> Well, I actually was I, – I forgot to do my opening statement and, and address the question that everybody has been, uh, you know, obviously wanting to know about leading into this game. And uh, I, I still haven't made my mind up on who's going to be the punter at, at Baton Rouge. <laughs> so we're still working that out. we got a lot of time to figure that out between now and then. And, and I don't think we're going to declare anybody to give LSU – we've played so many of them, they're going to have to – rotate we're gonna to have to rotate who they're getting prepared for and we'll just i think we could use that to our advantage and then you know we'll we'll go more pile them when we get down there surprise surprise <laughs> surprise you know